G'day folks, welcome to a little uh, machinery update. This update is on my 9 inch South Bend lathe. Um, I plan on doing little updates like this as I go along. Obviously not producing videos full time like I was planning. I'm currently back in full time work as a fitter and turner for working for a company. But I do still do the occasional odd job at home here and uh, need my machines. So yeah, this lathe is going to be around for quite some time to come. Um, the mill I'm going to take it apart next and refurbish and clean it up and stop the head from leaning forward because right now it's it's leaning forward and drilling and milling on an angle and there's no easy way to just adjust that out so it's probably going to take shims. Jury, I'm here. It's all right. Now, my dad's come down to stay for a little while from Queensland and uh, he just borrowed my car and she thought I drove off out of the driveway and started going crazy. But I'm here, girl. It's all right. Um, yeah. What I've done is add a digital readout. As you can see, it works. Got the x-axis, which is a cross slide. But you look at the top, there's no scale. That's because it's hidden down the bottom. It's the only way I can get these scales to fit was to undersling it. No, it's not ideal, but it's the only way you can make a chunky scale fit on such a tiny little cross slide. So it's still hiding down there. That's it in there. Um, all these parts, these brackets, uh, the back bracket and the, the um, x-axis moving bracket that's under here, I milled them all out of just solid 20mm uh, alley plate. Same with this piece here, that's just a piece of alley angle. That's where the other end of the scale is attached. The scale is too long for this machine, but that's fine. It's what I had lying around. This came out of a 1970s uh, uh, EDM, electrical discharge machine centre. I did a video on this years ago and put it in storage and never touched it, so I'm like, now it's time to use it. I've done a few tiny permanent modifications to this machine, which makes it non-original, but whoever previously owned it took a drill and a chisel to the bed anyway and kind of made a mess, so it's never going to be original again, and at worst I just fill the little screw holes with uh, a bit of um, DevCon metal putty and clean it up, and you never know they were there. You can see factory like porosity fixes with bits of lead there. Everyone does it. So yeah, I have full readouts. I don't have full travel. This um, y-axis scale is a little bit short, but uh, I don't really do any long work on this anyway. Most of my work is sort of four inches and under. I just put a stop screw there so that I don't run the uh, transducer into the end of the scale and smash it because uh, you can't really get scales for these things anymore. And I'm going to get it fairly close before... Eh. I haven't quite hit the end stop there. There is a screw down there to stop it, but uh, I just made sure that I had good clear travel either way. And, uh, yeah, I could have something big overhanging the chuck a little bit from the um, grip by the inside and uh, still bring the tool back here and work on it without hitting the end stop. So, yeah, yeah pretty good. Uh, I've made a little way cover here just to stop stuff getting down in that bottom corner there because uh, there are a couple of moving surfaces without a lot of clearance so just a bit of a tire tube does the job yeah that's basically all I'm going to do to this apart from maybe upgrade some of the the parts I'm going to get a new um, saddle pinion and uh, bull gear you can't really see it but those teeth are worn very thin there's a lot of play in it a little bit of wiggle this one's not too bad, I've taken some of the slop out of it. Just got to take the uh, end float out of this, I just make a brass shim that goes in here and it'll take the rest of that end float out. Back gears work. Half nuts are okay, well lead screws are okay-ish. There is wear and tear in it, but parts for these are quite expensive. Uh, and again, some of these little stud gears are quite worn. That one's okay. These ones are new. A whole box full of them in here. Yeah. I've got all the back gears, I've got the face plate for turning between centers, the original tool posts, the lantern style and the standard square type. This is a new addition as you can see, brand new, just a Chinese steel, all steel um, quick change post. Much better than any old, uh, old style screw type posts. And there's two more in there, and two brand new ones in the box there, so 
that's all good. New boring bars, uh, there's, there's internal and external threading tools. It's all China stuff, but for light duty hobby use, I've got no issue with them. They work just fine. Uh, parting off tools again, I've got a, um, what do you call it, a carbide insert parting tool as well as just a standard extendo, nice long high speed steel tool. Yeah, there's a carbide insert parting tool. So a few little upgrades as I go along. Uh, I would like to get a four jaw chuck for this next synchronous four jaw. I've got a synchronized four jaw, but they're as useless as tits on a bull. Oh, sorry, useful as tits on a bull. There's an imperial indicator, but again, I can use it just for um, truing things up as you center them in a four jaw. Yeah, so a few upgrades have happened. Shorter belt, drop this down a bit. Uh, it's sitting on plastic blocks on an alley base plate. The whole thing's basically better on an alley plate now. And if I turn the speed down. Variable speed. It does do zero to 100 hertz. I'm not going to spin it that fast with the chuck open, even though this is a bit stiff. And even at low speed, it's got a lot of power. I virtually never have to use back gear unless I'm doing big drills through steel, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Very good. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, give some more updates as I go along with the milling machine next, I guess. This one's almost done, apart from ordering a few replacement parts. Main thing is just that saddle, really. Everything else is working fine. And the DRO is really good. It's a Heidenhain branded machine. These things are not cheap. Uh, and I also picked up a um, Fagor unit off another EDM I did a video on a while ago. Uh, that unit died a few years ago and got chucked in a container at work and uh, they decided to throw it out the other day. So I went through and stripped all the bits off it, including a Fagor three-axis DRO. With only two scales, sadly, but You'll see that come up when I do the milling machine because uh, I don't have a vertical scale on it. The table can't move up and down and the quill, this is really all, all the reference you get for your um, Z-axis. So instead I'm going to make a new front cover, fix all the slop in the gear train and why it hops out of middle and uh, put a DRO scale and a second readout up here. So yeah, this thing isn't ready for retirement just yet. I don't have the funds to get a, um, a Bridgeport style mill nor the yeah, I've got to clean all this shit out. But yeah, I'll at least clean this thing up completely and uh, go from there. Thanks for watching.